On snare drum, you will play in the center of the head so you get the most articulate or dead sound. There's not gonna be any kind of resonance. On tenor drum, it's the opposite of that. So instead of playing in the center of the heads when you're going through playing on tenors, you actually wanna play close to the rim. Where you play will be equidistant depending on what you're doing. So what do I mean by that? So if you are playing through tenors and you're moving over to this drum right here, if you have your right hand and your left hand staying stationary so that they're the exact same position and you just move around like this, you're gonna have the right hand be closer towards the center, which makes it a deader, thudier sound, and your left hand's gonna be more resonant. That is a bad thing. The opposite happens if you go over to the other side and you play so that your left hand will now have a dead sound and your right hand will now have a more uh, resonant sound. So what you wanna do is actually use kind of like this windshield wiper approach where you are maintaining equidistance from the rim. So when you're moving around to the left side, my hands are not next to each other like this. My left hand is extended out and my right hand is a little closer. The opposite is true when you go over to the right side. Now the reason why you want to do that specific direction as opposed to like this is because the hand that is moving the furthest is gonna have to reach more if you do it like this. So my left hand is moving over across my body like this. So I don't want that. We wanna put this back closer to you so you have more efficient mo motion, I can't speak, <laughs> when you're playing through this. So your right hand will move out further, but stay equidistant from the rim. And then when you go to the left side, your left hand will move out further and your right hand will stay over here, again, staying equidistant from here. When you're playing a multi-drum sweep or scrape, depending on where you're at, you might call it something different, like a diddle. Instead of playing here, like if you're playing just flam accents split between one and two, when you're doing a diddle, you don't wanna go for that large distance right here and maintain the same playing zones. So your playing zones actually change when you're doing it to make it more efficient going from one drum to the next drum. Whether it's next to each other or skipping an entire drum, you want to have it be efficient as possible. So playing zones on tenors move all over the place depending on what it is you're playing. So if you're playing one here, or if you're playing a one drum, you're gonna play it like this. But if you're playing one drum over here, now suddenly you're changing so that you're using the windshield wiper. Ooh, perfect. Like that. But if you start doing diddles, you're gonna play up here as opposed to down here over demonstrate. Press into it so you can see it. So you won't do diddles like that. Instead, you'd play diddles like this. If you're moving from one drum and you skip a drum to another one, again, you wanna have the most efficient motion possible. So you're keeping the same vertical flow, but you're now just moving the arm over without changing the wrist because you don't want to go like this. Why? Because that's going to give you a different sound quality if you start playing like this. Some younger tenor players, they'll see like they'll play eight on a hand like that's going to give you a completely different sound quality. You're maintaining the same up and down motion vertical while you're simply moving from one to the next and trying to be as efficient as possible. Before I get to the next tip, I just want to say really quickly that you can find literally thousands of hours of free drumming play alongs and drumming tips in the link at the top of the description or by going into my home tab of YouTube. Let's say the stick control that you're playing through just has only snare part. You could come up with an infinite number of little variations there. So let's do the very first phrase of stick control. You're just playing right, 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 left. So you could have one hand that is just moving in another direction. For example, move to the right. So you just, and you just loop that over and over. You could also then move to the right. Going this way. So you're just moving over. Or you can move to the left. Again, maintaining an efficient motion while doing this. You could also have it so that your split is more than one drum. So for example, you could move to the right and go, and you're continuing that same motion, just going over instead of one, two, three, you're going one, two, three. So you could play and just repeat going to the right the entire time or repeat going to the left the entire time. 
but you could also make it so you go to the right, go to the left, go to the right, go to the left. So you just kind of like ping pong back and forth like a pendulum. So you're going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. The way that I was doing it though was also one, two, three. So I was doing two on the second drum, but you could also technically even go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So there's many different ways that you could go about doing that. Instead of just going in a direction, like to the left or to the right, is you could think of like the number of the drums and go down the number of the drums and then up the number of the drums. So it's a little weird with this three pattern, but you could go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Or you could even go four, three, two, four, three, two, four, three, two. So you're moving up the drums with this pattern. Or you could combine the two. One, two, three, four, three, two. So you're just moving down or up the number of the drums. You could also go in shapes. You could go in like a repeated motion. So you could be like, I'm gonna do a three drum pattern and just treat it like a triangle. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So you're just going in a motion that just keeps repeating over and over. You could also do it uh, like a Z pattern. So you could be like Zorro. You could do like a circle with four drums. So with like the four drums, you could go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That is weird because you're just constantly moving with like three notes in this case over a four note pattern. So one, two, three, then it starts here. One, two, three, then it continues one, two, three and then it finishes one, two, three, before it cycles over to one. That's just again for the very first like measure when you're playing this. So you could cycle something, repeat something. You could do like one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You can combine them. So you're going across the drum, all the way over, all the way over. You could go in different motions, different shapes, different patterns, this way, go that way, etc. That's a very quick overview of like how to come up with like patterns for just that very first one. You could then do the same thing for like other ones. Like you could be doing, this for the diddles, you could go up the drums or go to the inside rather. You could do crossovers, like even the very first pattern that I was doing, you one, two, three. And then the fourth note you could do here. I'm sorry, I hit the microphone. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then you hit right here. One, two, three, etc. So there are many ways that you can go about like, how do I wanna come up with a, a stick control pattern for this? When I'm practicing stick control, like if I'm trying to refine tenor drums, I'm just gonna stick with one of those ideas and then just like sit with it until it starts to feel comfortable as opposed to like every single rep doing something different. But when you see a drum line play through stick control, they'll play it usually, generally speaking, on one drum, just to make sure that vertical is good because that is the most important thing to focus on with tenors. If you can't play it vertically good and you try and move it around on the drums, guess what, it's gonna sound terrible. So they usually start with one drum and and then they start doing a, a pattern where like the next rep that they might do like just moving to the right or moving to the left. And then the next rep, they might add in some crossovers and do some other stuff. If you see tenors play stick control with multiple variations or a roll pattern with multiple variations or like accent taps or eight on a hand with multiple variations, they're cycling through stuff that they spent a long time working on. So it's not like uh, they only need one rep and then it's like, cool, I suddenly have mastered like three drum or four drum scrapes or sweeps. No, 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 no. What you see in the lot at like finals or whatever, at like a DCI competition is very different than what they actually do in rehearsal. So in rehearsal, they might sit there and just like grind this out for like an hour, five hours, like really slow. And then when they play it in the lot, they'll be like, all right, let's play it one time. Why? It's just basically a mental check-in to make sure that they can be focused enough to play it. It has less to do with honestly the physicality because when you look at a DCI line, when they are actually in the lot, they've likely are performing in the evening and they've spent several hours during the day practicing either as a group or on pads on the, the like the bus, etc. So it's not like this is their very first time picking up sticks for the day, which is very different than if you're like in a high school drum line where it might literally be the first time you've played when you show up in the lot. 